Hi, this is James again from North Mississippi. Just wanted to uh, finish up what we were doing before. This is after the disassembly of the internal combustion engine, and you see the motor is out. Um, looking at the front end of the truck, this is where I actually placed the heater element and some of the battery boxes. Here I was trying to get a good idea of where the batteries would rest. Those are some mock-up batteries that I made for other constructions that I've done. This uh, frame member you see to the right had to come out uh, as it was in the way of a couple of battery boxes I was going to put in. I mean, notice the central uh, axis is not in the center. It's actually off to the right some. That's an interesting thing about a Ford Ranger. That way I couldn't uh, balance the batteries exactly, but I got them pretty close. Here's all 24 of my batteries. It's 2,400 pounds of lead sitting there. And this is when I was starting to make the battery racks. Uh, there's some uh, two inch by three inch angle iron that's used as the, ba as the base of each of the racks. And there I'm just aligning some of them in the back, trying to get an idea of where they're gonna fit. Um, notice there's not much room in between the rear differential and that rack. And in fact, later on, uh, as I was driving it, I ended up rubbing a place in the middle of the uh, differential. I ended up taking part of the support out of the central portion of that rack. Here we've got uh, almost the final placement of where I'm going to put the batteries. And you see I got them as far to the back as I could get just to keep it off that differential as much as I could and over to each side as far as I could. This is just part of the frame system I was taking a picture of. You see I've got a little clearance here. It looks pretty good, but when I finally got it all welded in, um, there just wasn't much clearance there. As you can see, that's um, once again trying to get a final placement. I've got a little uh, floor jack up underneath there that I'm using to move it around and get, trying to get it lined up exactly where I want it. Some little final modifications I had to make, uh, cut off some of those sharp edges and uh, ground them off. And you see a line that I drew, drawn on one of the upright uh, pieces. And there's another little line I drew to cut off those edges and be less likely to damage the batteries. I was pretty satisfied at this point. I took it out. Here I am assembling the uh, hub and the adapter onto the motor itself. This uh, hub and adapter plate well, is actually designed for a, a 98 Ford Ranger with a 2.5 liter engine. It did not align properly and I had to uh, do a little uh, modification, but I was eventually able to get it to work. There we've got the clutch assembly on. There's my helpers. and uh, They usually got in the way. And there's Lulu. She tried to help a little bit. Next, I'm actually, uh, I have the motor assembled and uh, installed. It lined up well, but you'll notice the adapter plate did not cover the transmission appropriately. And there's a gap uh, in the top portion. I later covered that with an aluminum plate. Here you can see the uh, round motor mount. Uh, it's mounted in the upside down position. It worked out best that way. There I'm getting ready to, uh, I've just finished painting the uh, rear battery uh, rack and I'm about to start uh, putting it in and welding it into position. That thing weighed about, uh, I would say 150, 200 pounds. It's pretty hard to move around, but I've got it on a rack and jiggling it around a little bit and finally got to where I wanted it and welded it in place. It is there permanently now. You can pick the truck up by it. This is a uh, bracket I had to make for the uh, power steering pump and uh, I used a piece of uh, angle iron I had just sitting around and I cut it out with a torch and worked out just fine. It was, it's very strong. Uh, here I was uh, trying to get all my pulleys aligned. The power steering pump actually has a uh, hinge on it so I can tighten it uh, and put as much tension as I want to on the belt. There's one of the forward battery racks. That one holds four and you'll see it on the left but on the right I could only, only have room for it two battery rack and that's the third battery rack in the bottom portion of the frame there and there's a large piece of square tube steel that I used to support the rear. Here's all the pulleys in place and the belt in place. If you look at one of my videos you'll actually see this running. Um, I hooked it up to the battery and ran it. You can see I've got uh, the jumper cables connected to the battery right there and it ran very smoothly and quietly. I was very pleased with that.
here I'm starting to uh, assemble the tilt bed. I've got a couple of hinges just sitting there so I can make some alignment. This is the first hinge I was making. Those hinges are actually designed to be on an 18-wheeler back door. Um, and I took a piece of uh, bent angle iron, nestled them together, and put a long strap on it to support the bed. That's where the second hinge site was going to go. And then I just set the bed on there and I had to do a little sheet metal work around the bottom where the hinges go. Not much, just cut off a, about a quarter of an inch around each hinge. And there you can see the flat plates with the uh, um, things, the, the receptacles that hold the screws from the bed. Uh, the bed will actually screw into those little uh, flat clips that are on the metal plates. You also notice that, that those little uh, bed supports actually raised the bed up about a quarter of an inch. So I had to compensate in the front uh, on where the front portion should bolt in. I've got a piece of steel up there. It's a quarter inch thick to make the bed sit level. Here I've just painted the hinges uh, and I'm getting ready to do the final assembly. Put the bed on in there. Here's the bed attached to the hinges. Look, you get an inside view of how those bed supports work. You can see the bolts coming through the bed. Uh, they're screwed into the catch mechanisms and you can see the bolts going through the bed from the opposite side and there's the hinge fully extended and if you notice there's actually a grease grommet on the end of that I've greased them once but never had to do it again I've got some pneumatic uh, spring assist on each side these are Firestone uh, I think they call easy riders ride right uh, lifts and you can see the little nipple where they uh, can be uh, insufflated. I usually run about 60 PSI in them, and uh, that gives me plenty of uh, support. This is the latch uh, catch mechanism for the hinge, I'm uh, sorry, for the tilt bed. And this is actually the latch. It came out of a Dodge Colt. Uh, it was a hood latch mechanism that I got out of a local junkyard. And once I figured out how to actually put it together it came together really quickly and it didn't take me long to do it it's just figuring out a method of getting everything lined up there's some pneumatic uh, struts that I put in there to help assist lift the bed they're 200 pound struts I should have gone with the 250 pound struts the um, it can lift the bed fairly easy with one hand but it's uh, it takes a little strength um, so next time I'll use a little heavier strut and I think the next few pictures are just of the uh, latch mechanism itself, the release mechanism hidden in the uh, filler door. I'll also have a plug coming out of that later. I appreciate you watching my videos, and I'll try to get some more on as soon as I can. This is James from North Mississippi.